What's up guys? It's me, Paxton, from UWorld's College Prep Team. And today, I want to show you how to find the line of best fit on scatter plots. Now you may find these types of questions on either the SAT or ACT. And we often receive a lot of questions on these. So let's use our light board to work through it. This question says, the scatter plot above shows the number of seats in and the fuel efficiency per seat F in miles per gallon, or MPG, of 11 airplanes, as well as the line of best fit for the data. Of the following, which best represents an equation for the line of best fit? And the answer choices are F equals 0.42 in plus 26, B is F equals 0.83 in plus 26, C is F equals 0.42 in plus 60, and D is F equals 0.83 in plus 60. So when you're solving questions that ask you for the line of best fit for a graph, one of the first things you should do is look at the graph and see if you can eliminate answer choices from there. But one of the first things I want to remind you about is slope-intercept form. So remember that slope-intercept form is just the equation of a line of y equals mx plus b. And in this equation, y are just the y values, x are the x values, m is the slope, and b is the y-intercept. But if you look at our answer choices, such as choice A, we have F equals 0.42 in plus 26, and so on for the other questions. So it has F and N instead of X and Y. And you can match those up with the graph. You see that N are the values on the X-axis, and F are the values on the Y-axis. So rewriting our slope-intercept form with F and N doesn't change much, other than your Y value is F, your slope is still, we're going to figure that out, m. And then your x variable is just n plus our y-intercept of b, which we will figure out. So just remember our slope-intercept form when you're approaching questions like this. So to solve this question, let's first work out what our m or slope is. So remember that slope, which is just m, equals your rise over your run. So let's take a look at our graph to figure out what our rise and our run is. On our graph, we're going to identify two points that are on the line of best fit that are near where two grid lines cross. So at the very start of this line of best fit, there's the point 80, 60. So that's one of our points is 80, 60. And then moving up another point on the line, that occurs where two grid lines cross is 140.85. So our rise is our change in our y values, or in this case our f values, which is 25. And our run is our change in our x values, or in this case our n values, so 140 minus 80, which is 60. So that means that our slope is equal to 25 over 60, or simplifying that, we get approximately 0 0.42. Our slope is approximately 0.42. So looking back at our answer choices, that means we can eliminate choices B and D because they do not have slopes equal to 0.42. Okay, so you can calculate the y-intercept at this point, but for this one, let's just take a look back at our graph and see if we can figure out what our y-intercept is. Now remember, the y-intercept occurs where x equals zero. And this is why this question in particular brings up so many questions from students because it's a little bit tricky. Because if you're not paying enough attention as you're going through these questions, you might make a little mistake. So as we're looking at our graph, typically your y-intercept is where your line crosses or, or starts at your graph. And in this case, we cross at 60. Now, 
you might be inclined to say that your y-intercept is 60 at this point. But be very careful because let's look down to our n value. Our n value or x value is 80. And remember, y-intercept is where x equals 0, or in this case, n equals 0. So 60 is not our y-intercept. So we can eliminate choice C. Choice C is incorrect, which leaves us with choice A. So now let's take a look and picture it on the graph just to prove it to ourselves that our y-intercept is actually what choice A says of 26. If we kept tracing the line from n equals 80 down to where n equals 0, you would get a value much less than 60. And in this case, it would be 26. So the slope of the line of best fit in this case is f equals the slope of 0.42 n plus the y-intercept that we narrowed down to be 26. Now, if you don't believe me, you can work it out yourself and figure out that the y-intercept is 26. But I wanted to show you this one in particular because it is something that the test may do that if you're going too quickly, you may not realize that the graph is not actually showing the y-intercept, but it's showing the point 80, 60. So just be cautious when you're approaching these types of questions. You can have another approach to this question by finding another point near the grid line and plugging it into each of the answer choices and seeing which one results in a true statement to eliminate and get your right answer. But for more information on that method, make sure you check out our SAT question bank. I hope this has been helpful information. If it has, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. And remember, your dream school requires a dream score. So keep studying and prepping with UWorld. Your hard work is going to pay off. See you next time.